Hello geometry students. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, we are going over our notes for section 9.2. Uh, the title is special right triangles. I know that sounds kind of funny. Here's the weird thing. Special is a word that we just use in common language. Like, you know, I'm going to have a special day today because I get to go on a motorcycle ride or I want to make you a special dessert to eat, like, you know, chocolate souffle or something. But um, in math, the word special triangle actually does mean something official. So um, there's two different what we call special triangles in math. Um, one of them is called a 45, 45, 90. So the reason that a triangle is called a 45, 45, 90 is exactly what you might think. And that is because it has measurements of 45, 45, and 90 degrees. Now, they're not always going to mark all three angles for you. Because let's say, for example, that the right angle is marked and one 45 degree angle is also marked you would know that the other angle had to be 45 because they all have to add up to 180. So they don't have to have all three marked for it to be a 45, 45, 90. Now, what we want to notice is that with a 45, 45, 90, the two legs are going to be the same. So we can put, if we want, like a little hash mark here and here to show ourselves that a 45, 45, 90 triangle is isosceles which does make sense because of the isosceles base angles converse, which tells us that if the base angles are congruent, the sides opposite those also are. So we know that this is um, an isosceles triangle. We also know because this is a special 45, 45, 90 triangle, that the hypotenuse is always gonna be whatever the leg is times rad radical uh, two. So I would make a little note of that on your notes. I would say the hypotenuse is the leg times radical two. That is super important to know. Now we're gonna do two examples, one easy and one a little harder to go with this. So our first example would be, let's say we have a triangle with sides of three and we know that this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Who can guess what the length of the hypotenuse is? What would the length of the hypotenuse be? Well, the hypotenuse is the leg times radical two, so x would just be three times radical two. You literally just have to put the three in front of a radical two, and you've now found the third side of the triangle. That is the easy, easy version of the problem. Now, where it gets a little bit more complicated is where we are given the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse does not have um, a radical two in it. In this case, we would label our sides with X and we would have to say, okay, I know that the lead times radical two has to equal five because I know this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And then to solve for x, I would divide both sides by radical 2. The only problem is I can't leave a radical on the denominator, so I have to do something called rationalizing the denominator. And this would be my final answer. The leg would be 5 radical 2 over 2. So that's the 45, 45, 90. Now, Let's do a similar analysis of another special right triangle, and this is called a 30-60-90. So you can write on your notes 30-60-90, and let's draw a picture of a 30-60-90. Now the interesting thing is we do have specific names for each of the sides. This side is called the hypotenuse. The side across from the smallest angle is going to be the shortest side. So we're going to call this one the short leg. And the side across from the medium angle is going to be longer than that. So we're going to call that the long leg. We can call it the long leg because we don't refer to this, the biggest side as a leg. We just call it the hypotenuse. Now, on a 30, 60, 90, we can call the short leg x. The hypotenuse is pretty easy. It's just going to be 2 times that. So whatever the short leg is, you double it to get the hypotenuse. 
with the long leg, you're going to take the x times radical 3. So let's write down that information. On a 30, 60, 90, we know the hypotenuse is double the short leg. And we also know that the long leg is radical 3 times the short leg. Now, these problems are easiest to do when we know what the short leg is. So for example, let's say that we have a 30, 60, 90. And I know that the short leg is six and I wanna find the two other sides. We can call this maybe X and Y. It's pretty simple because I know that the hypotenuse is double the short leg. I would just double six and get 12 for the hypotenuse. And since I also know that the long leg is radical three times the short leg, the long leg would just be six times radical three. So you really don't have to do anything if you've been given the short leg of the 30, 60, 90. Where it gets a little bit more complicated is um, when you have a 30, 60, 90, where you've been given the long leg, that, that is harder. So we're going to have to do something similar to what we did with the 45, 45, 90. And we're going to want to um, set up two equations to solve. So let's go ahead and do the short leg first. I know that the short leg times radical 3 has to equal 4. And to get x on its own here, I can just divide both sides by radical 3. Then I want to rationalize the denominator. So I'm going to get that x is equal to 4 radical 3 over 3. Now, y is 2 times that amount. So 2 times 4 radical 3 over 3, which just ends up being 8 radical 3 over 3. So that is how we would do a slightly harder version of the problem. All right, let me look through my notes here and see if I can find you guys another example. We're going to do examples with both the 45, 45, 90 and the 30, 60, 90 so that you feel more comfortable with the material. This is an important lesson. So let's go ahead and find the area of the given figure. So let's take a look, um, let's call this, let's call this our first numbered example. Let's say that we have a square and we know it's a square because it has four hash marks like that. And this length is 13. And the question says, find the area of the figure. Well, I can see that these are two, oh, and we would need to have right angles there. Um, I can see that these are this is a 45, 45, 90 because I need to have the base angles be the same and the angles all have to add up to 180. So I know if I want to call the side X here, that X times radical 2 would equal 13. Then I need to solve for X by dividing by radical 2 and rationalizing the denominator. And I get 13 radical 2 over 2. Now, area means side times side. So 13 radical 2 over 2 times 13 radical 2 over 2. When I multiply across the bottom, I'm going to get 4. Uh, 13 times 13 is 169. And on the top, radical 2 times radical 2 is just 2. This fraction here can be reduced. I can divide the top by 2 and the bottom by 2. And the area ends up being 84.5. So that would how we, be how we would find the area of that figure. Let's go ahead and find the area of another figure. So in this particular case, I have a triangle. And I have marked up that the triangle is equilateral. 
and that the side length is 12. Now, does anybody remember if a triangle is equilateral, what do I know about the angles? If all three sides are the same, then all three angles would have to be the same. What's gonna happen though, when I divide this into two pieces, instead of this being 60, I'm gonna think of it as 30 plus 30. So what I've got when I have an equilateral triangle is I basically have two 30, 60, 90 triangles if I just split it down the middle. So I have a 30, 60, 90 and a 30, 60, 90. This would be six units here. So my hypotenuse is 12 and the height is six radical three. Now again, I have to remember the formula for area of a triangle, one half the base times the height. So I'm gonna take one half of 12 times the height, which is six radical three. If I take half of 12, that's six, and six times six is 36. So the answer here for the area of that triangle would be 36 uh, radical three. Okay, um, let's go ahead and do one last example. Example number three, it says a 14 foot ladder is leaning up against a wall. So let's draw a building here. Maybe it's, I don't know, you know, a skyscraper of some kind. And we have a 14 foot ladder leaning up against it. Keep in mind when you lean a ladder against a wall, you can't put it touching the wall. It has to come out from the wall a little bit so that, you know, the ladder won't fall down. Um, how high does the ladder reach up the wall when X is 30? So we're putting an X there. This is the length of the ladder there, which would be 14. So let's kind of blow up this part of the picture. And again, this was not drawn to scale. But if that is 30 degrees and that is 14, I know that this is a 30, 60, 90. Um, now, if my hypotenuse is 14, the short leg is gonna be half of that amount, or seven, and then the long leg would be seven radical three. They're wanting to know um, how high does the ladder reach up the wall? So it would reach a height of seven feet. That would be the answer to that problem there. Okay, um, I hope that this has been helpful to you and I will look forward to seeing you in class.